Welcome to Brightly You Radiant Being. The show encourages and invests in the radiance we all carry so you can shine your brightest. This season, we're embarking on a journey of personal growth and reflection as we explore the depths of the human experience. We'll use our good and bad experiences, friendship, and passions to inspire thought-provoking conversation and soul-driven advice to better help you create a life worth living and step more brightly into yourself inch by inch. Hi, Amy. Hi, Tracy. Uh, how are you doing since our last episode, The Reset? Oh, I, you know what? I am just like, I'm still just, what is, the, what you is look the a term buzz. I am? I, maybe that's the Your term, little Twitter page. <laughs> I am Twitter. And no, no, Twitter <laughs> page would be like, what should I do? What should I do? Oh. <laughs> You're but in a way, in a way, I am a little bit that way because there is sort of this, like, what do I, I'm still questioning, like, what is this reset? What will it look like? What could it look like? And so there are certain things that I'm like, yes. And then, so I don't know. It's just like this experimentation kind of thing. How about you? Well, two types of people, because I'm in the <laughs> same boat. But whereas you're all a buzz and a glow and like excited about this, I'm like, oh, my God, what <laughs> direction do I go in? Like, I have this awareness of a reset. Um, how, where do I set my sails? <laughs> like, and you, we're, we're having this, the same quandary, but like you're approaching it as like an adventure. And I'm like, I don't have a cosmic map. I can't find my cosmic compass. I don't know what to do. And I feel weird about it. <laughs> Just waiting. I feel like I need to be figuring it out. I need a guidebook. And I just yeah. I don't know. Like, I, I, I know I need the reset. I know what I was doing isn't working, but I don't know enough about what I want. Okay, so the fact that you said, uh, first of all, I love this whole analogy with the cosmic compass and and a guidebook I love all of that but in a way it does make me think that sometimes we do need that help right sometimes even if we know we need a reset or we want to go in a different direction we still need that help because we haven't done it before so we do need that guidebook that compass whether that's a coach or someone who's gone before you in a reset although that can be a little difficult too because of what if their reset is not your reset? Yeah. So in, instead of going to therapy for the thousandth, thousandth time about it or phoning a friend, which would have made way more sense, Amy, should have asked you about this at the end of the episode. Um, I decided like, hey, maybe the, you know, the cosmos knows. Maybe there is a guidebook. Maybe my higher self knows. Maybe my spirit guides know. Let's check in with some divination. Um, and then I came yeah. up against a couple roadblocks. Um, one, um, I, I say this all the time in response to other people and I had to say it to myself and it's, you have a lot of rules for an intuitive practice <laughs> 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 that, um, usually that's my response to other people when they're like, okay, if you're going to do tarot, you have to do this and then you have to do this and you have to do this kind of clearing. And this is how you have to ask your question. And usually my response is like, Wow, that's a lot of rules for intuition there. <laughs> I just go ring, ring, hello. <laughs> but, but I want, I, I want, you know, my word of the year last year was growth, right? And like, that's a huge goal for me. And I wanted to try this year to be more intentional with my spiritual growth, learn more, try new things on. And so I just, in this new, like, I have a reset let's you know look to the mystical magical esoteric you know side and see if that alleviates some pressure um what i found was i became really encumbered by all that i know i don't know and then the fact that there's so much i don't even know i don't know mm -hmm. and it seemed silly to start where i'm at because i have been doing that and that's how i ended up here right like yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. So you, you have been doing what? 
So in the past, I've done meditations, tarot card oh, readings, okay. you know, those, the types of things we've talked about in a lot of our episodes. Yes. Um, and I just feel like I'm, when I do those things, I'm, I, I, I end up right where I am, <laughs> that they have gotten me as far as they're going to carry me. Okay. Now um, I understand. Yeah. So what are you looking at now? Or do you, are you literally just like, I don't know what to do now? Well, well, so then that comes up to the other roadblock. So I did, you know, you know, I was like, okay, you know what? Maybe we can push ourselves to learn a little bit more, try things without thinking about it, um, stuff like that. And then my brain, you know, or like my higher self will be like, hey, Tracy, go do tarot right now. Like it's it's time to connect. Like I'm getting the call from the other side going like, hey, hey, ring, ring. Um, you wanted yeah. to talk about this. And instead my brain goes, try again later. <laughs> like, I got laundry to do. I have to prepare for work. I haven't grocery shop today. Sorry. I have to wash my floors. And so are your own rules popping up to block yes. the collar? You're, the here you're... and now is okay. really getting in the way of the future <laughs> because okay. of these rules that I can't do tarot if my other responsibilities haven't been attended to. Kind of like you can't rest or be productive, right? Like you can't rest if you know you have dishes or you sometimes, I think we've talked in the past, you've had these rules around what constitutes as rest and having to earn it, right? Whereas right. I'm like, oh, I can't, I can't. And it's not even like a mental block of like, oh, I can't concentrate. I can't focus. It's more like, how dare you do something like tarot um, when you have these bills that have to be paid. You have right? these, ob you have these obligations. 3D obligations. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So first of all, I get it 100% because uh, like you said, we've talked about this before. I have a lot of rules. I have a lot of weird rules around things and I know that they're weird rules. And every once in a while, I have a, a reaction to my own weird rules where I end up talking to myself where I'm like, what, yeah, what are you doing? Like, yeah. where did this even, how did you invent this rule? And I have a feeling that I invented some of my rules just so I could feel in control, even though mm -hmm. what happens is the rules sort of mess up the control, if that makes okay. sense. Yeah, I think I think creating my own rules was a way to have control. I'm almost positive. Well, we have an episode two seasons back about control and... Oh, the, the next one after that was, um, what did we call it? Um, rebellion, right? Yeah. Um, and it's been a little while since we've talked about it, but my problem is like, let's say I have this thing I have to do. It's not urgent, but it's important. And I know I need to do it. Right. So like spring is coming. Um, I won this grant for, to build a pollinator garden. So I know I have some things I have to do for that. I have to watch webinars. I have to look up like rules for getting reimbursement, right? And then I have fun things like what do I want to plant? And then I have practical things to learn and prepare, like getting ready for the actual work, right? But I also I have some time, right? And so it's not it's not urgent, but it's important. It has to get done. And I also, as you know, want to read the Bridgerton books, right? <laughs> and so my brain as, is like, as don't we all want don't to we read all, the Bridgerton right? or reread the Bridgerton books? Yeah. And, <laughs> and so when I'm faced with like a physical copy of a book that I own, right, and have access to all the time and this important but not urgent, my brain will say, oh, we can't read this book. We can't watch this movie. We can't go and do this fun thing. Until we do this thing, not that I have to earn it, but like, oh, you have only a finite time, energy, focus. And this other thing is fun. It's a garden planning, right? Like, yeah. but it has a lot of tasks and it's a lot of new stuff, right? But it's also, like you said, kind of an obligation. So my brain has this rule, like I can't do one till I do the other, but I don't have that thing that you have where it's like, okay, so I'll just go do the thing. I have to do the thing. No, instead I'll sit and do nothing, right? Like I'll just... <laughs> I will, I will be in a free state and I will yeah. not only t will time continue to pass, but I will have neither read a book nor done the thing. And then I look back and I'm like, oh, you know, and I get some of this is like executive dysfunction and like kind of that free state people with ADHD and, and other yeah. neurodivergencies can get into. And so 
I'm conscientious, like I am doing a lot of thinking around both problems and the current one of not doing it, which is just as exhausting as if I would have, you know, what I've done the last two weeks is I just read the book, right? And part of that was the library prompted me because they gave it to me digitally. So I I have a very... <laughs> I have a tight end date before Libby snatches that out of my hand. Yeah, you don't get to just keep it on your on your bookshelf, right? <laughs> and just that. be like, whatever, I'll return it when I return it. Right? And so it <laughs> felt so good to do that and to read. And you and I have been having fun talking about it. I have another friend that read it. So it's also providing me socialization um, in addition to just fun. Um, but then, like I said, my brain will be like, hey, why don't we go to Suntero this morning? And my brain will be like, oh my God, no, we got to finish this book. We started this book. <laughs> we can't have any distractions. Our little ADD brain can never, right? So like it still creates like these rules. Yeah. Um, can't do this till you do this. Okay, then I'll do nothing. <laughs> I don't know if that's oppositional defiance or what, but so I just started thinking about what are some funner rules to like replace that BS with? Okay, I'm all in fun, more fun rules, right? Like fun. playful rules. Okay, so playful I put rules. some, I put some on my fridge to kind of inspire me yeah. to live more like this, even in the realm of having a house you have to maintain, right? Because I love how you reframe house cleaning with I get to bless my house, right? Yeah. And you like make yeah. a, a thing out of it. So I found um, on Pinterest, so I, other than that, I don't have anyone to attribute these to, but it says general wolf rules for life. Are you familiar? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. So it's a list of one through 10. So they, they're pretty basic, right? Eat. I do that. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> Rule accomplished, right? Rest. Rove in between. Render loyalty. Love the children. Cavill, caval in the moonlight. Tune your ears. Attend to the bones. Make love. How often? Okay. First of all, you had me at rove, rove in <laughs> rove between. Rove in between. Tend to the bones. Attend to the bones. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I was like, this person, I know it's a wolf, but like, let's say like, there's a person out there who follows this. Mm -hmm. That's like, you know, when we talk about, you know, have tea with your future self and like things right. like that. Um. I'd be like, oh, this is a cool chick. I'd want to hang out with her. I would aspire to be like this. I can picture this person. Why can't I live like this person? <laughs> Why you're can't not, I? You're not that person. You have to come up with your own fun rules. Well, that's what I mean. Like, why did I glom on to these stupid rules? <laughs> because, because I, I'm, I. Okay, I don't know why, but what comes to me, I can only answer for myself because yeah. it was what was available at the time for me to feel in control of a situation or that I was, um, you know, accomplishing something. So what was available to me at the time? I don't think I would have thought to myself, if you must travel, you know, if you need to uh, go from the couch to the refrigerator, you must skip like that <laughs> is a great rule, right? <laughs> That's a fun rule. Yeah. Like you must always skip instead of walk. Okay. Maybe not always, but skipping is friggin' fun. I'm and just watching gonna... an adult skip is a great time. You're providing fun to other people. Right? <laughs> but because typically rules are created through um, uh, some form of anxiousness, Ooh. right? You. And I think that in anxiety, you don't consider out of the box thinking and fun, uh, fun concepts are not uh, accessible at that time. I love that because obviously we're not talking about like societal rules and norms right. and relationship rules. Like these are just like these weird habitual rules, subconscious rules, and maybe some of them are really conscious that you've kind of applied on yourself, but they're more likely to keep you stuck than help you yes. grow. Um, So I love that little things like skipping because one rule during the pandemic, I saw someone say, don't put it down, put it away. And I was like, why was I never taught that rule in life? Oh my God, that's amazing. 
Right. I and was so- not taught that rule in life until I married my husband. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. And but- it wasn't like it was, I was taught a rule. It was yeah. just like, Hey, this is better this way. But like d- just the the concept of it, it solved a different problem in my life, right? So you, yeah. so a lot of these subconscious and habitual rules we come up with, I love that you, you know, they are developed from a need to quell anxiety. Mm-hmm. And I think these ones that um, like the don't put it down, put it away, like that solved a problem that was causing anxiety for me, right? So it's kind right. of, it's still, it's still tackling it th- through that way, but I was going to say, hey, let's come up with a list like based on your values, but maybe we need to diagnose like our anxieties, right? Like, so for, for me, a lot of my rules that I think of kind of boil down to, I'm either anticipating or responding to, to things in life, Mm -hmm. but even within those two places, I'm never actually preparing a plan. So I'm not actually any more ready, right? Like I've mentally, you know, prepared through some scenarios and I might have an awareness of things because I have an anticipation. But since I'm anticipating like 10 different things could happen, um, like for work and stuff like that, I'm known for like, oh, you're already always ready if this comes up in a meeting or if we decide to go this way or that, like you have it. And I'm like, I've only thought about it. This isn't just happened in the moment. (laughs) This is intentional. Yeah. (laughs) I foresaw this. I'm a fortune teller. Um, (laughs) But, you know, when I think of- Put that on your resume, kids. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. It used to be, um, she does the job that needs to get done. (laughs) was essentially the vibe my cover letter went. And now it's going to be like, I anticipate what's going to happen. I I can tell your fortune. (laughs) Yeah. Tell the future. Um, no, but I was, so like, I think some common rules in this world that kind of come up for people that might be relatable is like, I have no power in life. I'm not powerful. It's, you see that as a rule or as a truth, not a truth, but just something that they think. And so then they have to come up with a rule for, I can't do X, Y, Z because I'm not powerful, right? Like only powerful people can do X, Y, Z would be the rule. And oh, then the truth would be, I don't sorry. view myself as powerful. Yeah. So we, yeah. Yeah. We got there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Um, <laughs> but you know, something like that, or, um, I'm unlovable because only people of a certain weight, a certain skin tone, a certain style, a certain financial background, et cetera, are lovable. Right. Is, mm-hmm. is a rule you might set. So maybe not necessarily something you have to follow, um, like we were talking about before about like, oh, I, I can't have fun until I <laughs> check this box. Um, but maybe a rule that's like influencing your life and then preventing you from taking action. Yeah. I, I, I look at that as kind of like, uh, I, I get it as a rule. And I think what happens is that we where it becomes a belief and then it's our truth, yeah. right? Even though it's n- none of those things. So if let's say you're a spirit guide or maybe you, <laughs> your spirit guide is already told, right? Let, let's, so like, let's say that. <laughs> well, okay. Do you think like your higher self or spiritual guides have rules they want to give us or want you to be following? Like earth rules are stupid. So what would they want us to do? I don't know if it would could be categorized as a rule. I think that they would, I feel like they would, um, I don't think spirit guides balk at anything, but I think that they would be like, what are you talking about rule? I don't think that they would understand that term oh. unless they were like ascended and they had lived a human life. But I feel like a spirit guide would say it, uh, oh, Okay, I had like, uh, like, uh, apparently my spirit guide was talking to me. And then all of a sudden, I got in the way (laughs) and can no longer hear my spirit guide. But that's my initial reaction is that they would be like, uh, we don't do rules. We do guidelines. Yes, guidance. We do the compass, that cosmic compass, that cosmic guidebook. But rules are too feel too uh cut and dry too human yeah yeah I think I think I think so I got really 
You did get really. If you're watching on YouTube, we're both having yeah, really significant really, lighting challenges. Really bad lighting <laughs> challenges. Um. Well, and so when I was thinking of rules, or I guess now guidelines, suggestions, really a comment, I guess, um, that they would be like, "Hey, live in alignment. Hey, practice mindfulness, love, gratitude." joy which really doesn't help me because i'm like yeah i I need that's the end point on the map where and the compass Mm -hmm. i I need i need to know like yes you're giving me true north but like i need you to say when you get up in the morning you're going to have three glasses of water then you're going to have a (laughs) cup of coffee you're going to do your gratitude journal then you're going to meditate then you've got map quest your right (laughs) um I'm thinking more just like, what's the general terrain? What do I pack? I'm trying to anticipate. <laughs> what do I pack? Leave the gun, take the cannoli. <laughs> <laughs> That's the cannolis. Right? <laughs> Two different oh, movies. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I just, so, I don't know. Would you, do you think alternative rules at this point in your life could replace other ones for you? Um, Listen, I'm willing to try anything at this point. I even think my spirit guides are like, fine, whatever. Just would you stop with like, you have to do this one thing before you're allowed to do this other thing? Because that's (laughs) ridiculous, Amy. So let me, let me just answer it. The fact that, that I said, okay, if I'm going to do this thing, I should skip To me, that just opened up a whole world. And I'm like, why don't I make rules like that? If I have to be in a work meeting, that means like, then I, uh, the rule is make three people laugh or like write with uh, pink pens or, you know, to just to create some joy, but you know, some of the rules that I have, um, even just like, like I have such weird rules or I think I did with writing where it was, you know, if I didn't have a character name, I couldn't write. Like you have to have the name of the character before you can start writing. And then I I would just stop writing. Even though I had scenes figured out in my head, I didn't have the name. And so I couldn't write it. And then that was it for like four months. So I don't have that rule anymore. (laughs) (laughs) So like I'm trying to picture a life in which I would not only remember these rules, but do them and throw the stupid earth rules out the window. Well, that's just it though it's hard to live in society and not follow society's rules unless you're unless you're you're thinking broader terms earth rules like oh you know there used to be a rule of thumb which was like not quite a law but a you know best practice that when you turned uh let's say 50, your hair could not be longer than, you know, a certain length. And um, that rule was easy for me to break. And now I don't think it's a rule anymore. But uh, so it depends on what kind of earth rules you mean. Well, just those, you know, unconscious or background rules, like uh, we started the episode with of like, feeling called to connect with my higher self spirit the divine and declining the call (laughs) because I'm just going to sit and procrastinate on life for a bit and now I have two things I didn't do right Mm -hmm. and so it's more of those rules you know unless some of the society ones although you know bulking some of those more cultural ones will help you skip in public and tell three jokes in a meeting right I think this goes back to your ability 
to romanticize your life and follow through with it, right? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. When you said, you know, the skip and, and some of the other rules you're you're kind of generating, um, there's one from Dorothy Parker that I love or one of her quotes. I don't know if it's a it's not necessarily a rule she followed, but a quote she's known for. And it's take care of the luxuries and the necessities will take care of themselves. You know, oh, my gosh. Practically, right? Like practicality tells you earthwise rule. Like there's still some rules within that so that you don't go to financial ruin. But <laughs> there's also a bit of like, oh, I can buy the fancy butter and now I'll want to make breakfast, right? Like little things like that. I can get the fancy French butter yeah. and now I'm interested in cooking. Whereas yesterday I didn't want to get out of bed early enough to, you know, make a, a warm breakfast. Right. Right. I, I'm all for that. And also I think sometimes we, uh, uh, commodify or we think that luxury is expensive and there are many luxurious things you can do in your life that are actually free or not that spendy. And, and as I'm thinking about it, yes, if you were to look at the fancy French butter, $12, or fourteen dollars, you know, a pound, and regular butter is—I don't know. I think it's what, seven? like six, seven. Yeah. So French butter might be even more than that. And and yes, there are times that you might say, "Oh, I can't do that." But in the huge scheme of things, fifteen dollars—if if fifteen dollars gets you to wake up and cook for yourself and also enjoy your morning, yeah, and and feel like you've romanticized your life by using friend, fancy French butter. I mean, I've, I've, I've had fancy French butter <laughs> and it is good. <laughs> <laughs> it makes a difference. Well, no. Okay. So now that we're talking, you know, these quiet luxuries, I've uncovered a rule that I have that I'm very aware that I do. Yeah. Um, but I feel really lazy and unpresentable to society if I am not showered and ready both when the sun is up but also like those general like 1990s rules of like between nine and nine you could expect a visitor you could expect a phone right like whatever polite society says um and especially you know when I lived in an apartment I didn't worry about it as much but especially when I got to know my neighbors at my house and there was potential for drop in in five years. Not once did anybody drop in without a text in either direction, right? Or we ran into each other already outside. But I still like, oh, I can't be in comfy clothes or I can't be in pajamas or I can't X, Y, Z when it's really sad because a huge goal of mine when I bought my house was to buy an owner I have. But like I have these fancy silky satin pajama, like pant and top and these elaborate robes and like what I call house coats and just yes. like, like a smoking jacket kind of thing. Right. And my goal was like, I'm going to be like that rich aunt. Right. Like the <laughs> I the aunt love that's just it. a little crazy, a little out there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's a word that starts with E that is just escaping my mind. Eccentric. eccentric. I was gonna be the eccentric aunt, right? And I, I had my Florence in the Machine pajama robe set, uh, whatever picked out, and like I never fully embraced that because, like, what if somebody came over, right? And like, oh, how silly would that be at seven o'clock? Even though I love to be in my comfy clothes at seven, and I don't anticipate having anybody on a Tuesday night come over. But like, I had this rule, and then like, of course, I'm not using the fancy pajamas because, like, oh well, I'm, I don't want to waste them just sleeping in bed for six hours by my, right. Like, they were meant. To, right and like so I'm not even using something right and the rules that we put on ourselves for clothes right like how many dresses do I have in my closet that I don't wear because I don't want to overwear them or overuse them for when I might need them but then I never wear them and then they're just not in style for a bit right like I know I've told this story before on the podcast huh. and I am going to tell it again I want to hear it let's go so my mom uh was living in this house and she also had two friends that lived with her. She it was like a three uh, lower level, main level upstairs. And during a certain amount of time, one of her grandsons were living there as well. And I think he at the time was probably in maybe an older teenager, younger, or, you know, new adult type of situation. 
And my mom had these fancy white towels, fancy white fluffy towels that she said, these are not for everyday use. These are for guests. These are not to be used. She didn't use them. Nobody else was supposed to use them. Okay. And a guest isn't going to use white one. Towels. Well, right. All right. <laughs> so the, the grandson at one point takes a shower and uses the fancy fluffy white towel. So now the fancy fluffy white towel has been used. It's wet. It's dirty. It's all these things. My mom is like, I can't believe you used it. Whatever. It goes into the hamper with the dirty clothes. Not long after, like literally either that night, the next day, within, let's just say before the laundry's done, okay? <laughs> her uh, her uh, furnace, oil furnace, has a leak and a fire starts. My mom's, a, no, no smoke alarm. God love her. This was years ago. She wakes up. And first of all, that's another story because something woke her up. Right. Like, uh, yeah. like you have to wake up. Yeah. She gets up. Andy's no, not at the house. I shouldn't have said the name. The grandson is not at the house. <laughs> she wakes up both her friends upstairs and downstairs. She grabs a towel, wets it, rips it in half. Not a fancy white fluffy one, a different one covers their mouth. She gets them out of the house. The house burns down. Well, practically burns down. The one fancy, fluffy white towel that was saved is the one that had been used and was wet in the laundry hamper. And that one was saved. <laughs> so my mom was a public speaker and that became a part of her talk. The fact that use the things, don't yeah. put things off. Don't Your keep things for a burn fancy. down. Literally. So she had at the end of the talk, this white towel that on it was written in red later letters. Don't put things off, like just use it, do it. And so no matter how many times I tell the story or think of the story, there's still things that every once in a while I think, oh, I better save that. But luckily I'm like, no, no, and use it. What's so funny, I think the last time you shared the story, I probably shared, we had a don't touch room in our house that when, oh, yeah. We, yeah. when we finally upgraded and were able to buy a house and they renovated it, we had two living rooms. And so they designated this one front room. It had all white cream furniture, <laughs> no TV in it. And we, it was the don't touch room, no kid room. We had white cat, we had a white cat and a white dog, like... <laughs> It was white carpet, you know, all this stuff. And so I was like, in my house, I'm never going to be like that. And so I do. I have these cream colored towels in my bathroom as well. And I was like, you know what? Someday you are going to use the more decorative towels or whatever. And yeah. I was like, so let's just buy a backup set. And then people can use them. You can use them. You know, I used to when I first bought the house, I'd wash them separately from the other towels. God knows why. And suddenly I was like, oh, no, we're breaking this rule. But then like here, that rule still lives in me in other ways with like clothes and outfits and other things. And so we have so many ways to still learn how to break rules we think we've already broken. 100%. And I think we don't even realize the rules that we make for ourselves or have that we should break, right? And I think that once we start looking at these rules, taking them out, examining them, and, and it's as easy as, because you can catch yourself with your silly rules, right? You can right. catch yourself in the middle of it when you're like, oh, no, no, I can't do that. And then you can just be like, wait a minute. Why, who's, who's, who said I can't do that? Why did I think I couldn't do that? And I think, so, okay, I'm going to take two things from uh, this chat. Um, <laughs> one, who said I, I couldn't do that and like breaking rules and just really paying attention to if rules prop up in my life, even if you're not ready to break them, like just mm -hmm. really, you know, taking them out and holding them and examining them. But then also, you know, like, I want to be a wolf. What rules do I want to implement, right? Like be really intentional with creating a yeah. rule more in line with the value in life 
but maybe you know some of my values and other stuff and uh, are very aspirational right like very idealistic and so maybe a rule is a, is an easier way to kind of bring that into the here and now yeah so I still don't know what my reset is going to look like but it's going to include whimsy fun playful rules to whimsy to live by. I love whimsy <laughs> Oh, anything you're going to take from this? I am. I am going to try and just be um, attentive and uh, not get swept away by life and my own rules and to actually look at them when I feel myself coming up. Because I can hear Rick say, you have a lot of rules around that. Ooh. And and, and it's, for him it, to say that, wow. I, I know, because in case someone is out there and they don't know who Rick is, Rick has a lot of rules about everything. So, <laughs> and it's served him well. <laughs> Apparently it's going to serve you well too. <laughs> but looking at them, I think it will serve me well. I feel like I'm going to do the same thing you do. And, and I want to look at the wolf rules and maybe change them a little bit for myself. Yeah. Um, yeah. I love that idea. I love, uh, uh, except how often I think that one I might, I might keep. <laughs> I love that. Well, if this episode spoke to your soul, please share it with a friend. And if you have time, give us some love on your preferred platform with a rate review and subscribe. You can also reach out to us via Instagram and YouTube under the Brightly Podcast or via email at brightlypodcast at gmail.com. With that, we hope you have a bright and beautiful rule-breaking day.